Well, hey there. This is a short episode of the HVAC School Podcast, just a small little nugget that hopefully will be worth your time. And before we get into that, I want to thank our sponsors. One of the people I want to thank that isn't technically a sponsor, but it's a company that we work with is SolderWeld. If you haven't taken a look at SolderWeld products, then I don't know where you've been, but you can go to productsbypros.com and you can find out more about SolderWeld and where you can buy it locally. Or if you find that you can't buy it locally, then you can go to True Tech Tools. And specifically, I'm going to suggest that you look at the all-in-one kit by SolderWeld. I think you're going to like it. It's a very good value for what you get. It comes with everything you need to basically do all of the bracing and soldering jobs that we run into in HVAC in appropriate quantities. And then I also want to thank Fieldpiece, fieldpiece.com, refrigeration technologies, makers of all sorts of really good cleaners and products, chemicals for the HVAC industry that are more natural and less chemical. NAVAC, NAVACglobal.com, makes all kinds of great tools for the HVAC industry. They're innovating a lot of new products into the U.S. market that you may be interested in, and you can find out more about them at True Tech Tools as well if you want to see the price points on some of the products. And again, that code GETSCHOOLED always works for these products. Today, I want to talk about Stack Effect. Stack Effect. Stack Effect gets a real rap, and uh, I think there's some confusion about Stack Effect, so let's address it. The idea is that hot air rises, right? And hot air does rise. But a better way of saying it, I think, at least from my mind, is hot air floats on top of cooler air. So heat doesn't rise by itself. Heat actually just causes molecules to vibrate more quickly or move more quickly. So when you increase the temperature of something, you increase the average molecular velocity. That's what temperature is. Temperature is average molecular velocity. So when something is a higher temperature, it means that there is more speed of the molecules. The molecules are moving faster, by definition, than something that is a lower temperature. So that's really what we're measuring. So when you have air where the molecules are moving faster, then those molecules separate from each other if they're allowed to. And that results in air that is less dense. So when something is less dense than something else, then the less dense thing is going to tend to float on top of the more dense thing. And so that's what we see when you have a rubber ball that you shove down into a bathtub and you let go of it. It floats up to the top because the air inside the ball, the overall density of the ball, is less than the density of the water around. So it floats. Its density is less, lower than. That's how we can think of that. And when you think of air... The air that we work with most often isn't pressurized. We're not pressurizing air in a building, at least not to any large degree. Obviously, water column scale, we can measure pressurization. The Pascal scale, we can measure it a little bit. But we're not like packing air into a room. That's not our intent like we are in the case of refrigerant where when we pressurize something, we know that the temperature increases and we depressurize it. It decreases. And mostly what we're doing when we change the temperature of air, one of the big effects is that you change the density of the air. So when you heat it, The molecules, they move more quickly, and so they bounce against each other, and they tend to separate. To say that heat rises is kind of false because hot stuff tends to rise within itself. So if you have hot air and cold air, then the hot air rises or floats above the cold air, and the cold air sinks. Colder air sinks, lower temperature air. That's what we say colder. Colder just means lower temperature than something else. And so when we say warm air or hot air rises, what we're saying isn't that hot air intrinsically always rises. The point is, is that when you have air that is of a higher temperature than the air around it, then it floats on top of the colder air. Or you could just as easily say the colder air sinks below the hot air. But those two things happen simultaneously. And so we say this thing that hot air rises. And so if you think about a house that has a furnace in it, and we dump all this heated air into it, we're running it from the house through the furnace, the furnace heats the air, and then it puts it back into the space. So it's actually increasing the volume. So if you measure the volume of air that goes into a furnace and the volume of air that comes out of a furnace, if you measure it perfectly, the volume of air will be greater coming out of the furnace because by increasing the volume, you've decreased the density. So the air is less dense coming out of the top of that furnace. So that hotter air, hotter than the air in the room, is going to tend to float on top and the colder air is going to sink down below. So what happens is, is if you have a two-story house or a house with high ceilings and you dump some hot air into it out of a furnace, then that air is going to lift. And naturally, as that lifts, what's going to tend to happen is that it's going to leave a vacuum in behind and it's going to draw in colder air. So you're going to end up with colder air on the floor that's drawn in from under the doors and around the windows and any cracks in the walls. Low in the building, it's going to draw in cold air and then that warmer air is going to lift to the top of the building. It's almost kind of like a balloon, but the thing's not taking off. You just have this balloon of air, this body of hot air that's rising to the top just because the density is lower. 
But then in cooling season, we get reverse stack effect. So that's what we call stack effect. This hot air rises to the top. And that happens when you're heating the air through an appliance. So the air that's coming out of the appliance is warmer than the air that's in the space. So when we do the opposite, when we cool the air, so we're putting cooler air in than the air that's in the space, then that cooler air sinks and the warmer air displaces it and moves upward. So what happens as that cooler air sinks is as there's that motion, that movement away, then what happens is, is it creates a, a negative pressure in behind and so we get reverse stack effect. So that's where we tend to draw in hot air from around open can lights or around ceiling boots or around any gaps and cracks around the top of the drywall. So in places like Florida, we're very concerned about sealing around the ceilings because we're primarily cooling. So as we put that cold air in, it sinks down and it creates a negative pressure at the ceiling, which drags in that nasty air from the attic. Whereas in colder climates where you're running the heat more often, you get the stack effect where it's drawing in from the floors. And that's where things like door sweeps become very, very important. And you'll notice you're running the heat, if you have a gap underneath the door, that cold air is just rushing in, or I should say colder air, lower temperature air is rushing in to take up the space. And it can be helpful to think about that. And so it's more important when you're heating to make sure that the low areas are sealed in order to prevent that cold air from coming in due to the stack effect. And then in cooling season, it's more important that we seal the upper parts that we were not drawing in hot air. But either way, that stack effect does occur and there's these pressure imbalances because that air is moving. But instead of thinking of it as just rising, I think it's helpful to me to think of it as simultaneously floating and or sinking. So cold air sinks, hot air floats just in the same way that things sink and float in water. For my brain, that helps me kind of imagine it a little bit better. So hopefully that helps you and we will talk to you next time on the HVAC School Podcast.